about uh, the uh, the dark, dark, dark clouds and uh, dark cloud or rather covering of ignorance. All right. The initial verse. Earnestly cultivate good affinities and plant good seeds. When the seeds mature into fruits, we attain liberation. So um, go back to the underlying uh, teaching that is intrinsic goodness in all of us, right? So, but we are being uh, covered with layers and neighbor conduct that with our habitual tendencies. And then the obscuration is the one that covers up our mind and unable to see the truth. So if we then have all these good affinities, this, this is all about purification and planting good seeds. And then we will then attain liberation. Then if you have not formed good affinities, we must quickly do so. Um, that this is one that we, this is one of the voice of the path is because we walk amongst the masses. So therefore, um, remember the story that even though that someone may not be able to be able to give, but the thing is that a smile is still a gift. So the great enlightened one has compassion and exercises wisdom. And this is where um, that everyone um, no matter what the past they may be, has always been able, be able to cultivate. So this he is the guiding teacher of the three realms and the father of all four kinds of beings. So in the master's explanation here is that we must first cultivate good affinities and regularly plant good seeds. So the this affinity is important to cultivate because this affinity in um, lifetime after lifetime of cultivation will grow in what you call the spiritual uh, rewards to help the, you to be on the path. <laughs> so in much the same way, I must explain that in Sakyamuni Buddha came down and he was the next uh, Buddha because of the great affinities he had already established in all his past life. So the same thing is the same analogy which is here. So the coming law of cause and effect is a fundamental belief of spiritual practitioners. So we must understand it very well. And I, I want to talk about this word belief, right? Because the this is, this is the part that sometimes when you talk to one who does not believe in the cause of law, in fact, they want proof that it is indeed there is such um, uh, cause and effect. And this is where sometimes it's very hard for someone to take on this path because he doesn't believe in that. And because he wants proof. So therefore, that's why some people would then ask, why is it that he's such a nasty person, but he got so much merit, he's so rich, he's so powerful. Um, and, and that's because he has the merits in the past life. But then the problem, I think, about belief, about cause and effect is that the mind of the ordinary people can only discern within this lifespan. And that's where the differences between one who believes and one doesn't believe. So we must understand it very well, as the master said. So then we can engage in a spiritual cultivation otherwise. Yeah, then one will be stuck in what you call a one life theory. So what are we cultivating? We are cultivating goodness. Why is it covering with goodness? Because that's in the intrinsic nature and that's what it is. So this cultivation is covering goodness is to remove this, all these layers of affliction, which is covering our intrinsic nature. Then on interpersonal relationship, we must uh, form good affinities, which is what it is. So when we walk among the masses, so for the whole life that we are here, we are not a uh, hermit living in a mountain, that, um, and that, that's not what cultivation is. Yeah, you can go to the cave and, and gain realization, but at the end of the day, you still will be walking amongst um, the people. And that's what we need to do in creating those affinities. So we need to learn to be harmonious in our cultivation. We need to attain a peaceful character. Positive causes and the condition will then automatically yield positive karmic retribution. And then eventually, then the system mature grow into fruits and attain liberation. And the four right efforts um, that this is part of our cultivation, right? So, so that we generate um, from the good thoughts and so that we don't arise any unwholesome thoughts so that we'll always be wholesome. 
in our words and also in our deeds. Then there's a, this part about the teacher and the father, which I picked up. I said, the Tathagata is a father to all the worlds, right? which must have some been saying for all kinds of beings and uh, the three worlds. He's both a teacher and a father. So the difference is this, the, the, because we are a parent, a parent would teach us a child in a different manner as one who would teach us somebody else. And this is what the uh, link to teach with loving kindness. So, and this in the human realm, and the human realm uh, is because we have fear, because we, what, is, what is fear? Fear is about the unknown. Right. So how then, then he eliminate the fear is just to explain to us about emptiness and illusoriness. So it's all about the power of the mind. So when we understand the truth, there is no fear. So if you notice that some of the temples that you go, you notice that some of the Buddha images have one hand lifting up uh, like this, what I'm showing you now, lifting up like that. And that is actually the sign say, no fear, okay? And there's the mudra of what we call no fear. Uh, weaknesses, and this is where weaknesses are arising from not being able to, we are, do not understand uh, what the truth is. Uh, vexation, anxiety, and worry, and so on and so forth. And this, all this arises because we either live in the past or we live in the future. We live in the past with regret, we live in the future with anxiety and worry. And so, and to teach us to live in the present of now, in the present moment. So in the three realms, sentient beings will be filled with panic and fear. And that's because of all these things that arises and given right to, and all these things are confuses our mind. So we could not coverings of ignorance because we do not know the truth. So the Buddha wanted to eliminate um, sentient beings, completely eliminate their ignorance. So all these things, then, the teacher to the father, I, I use this little bit because, you see, one grows to become a spiritual friend. And one of the difference between is this great graduation that goes through from a spiritual friend, one that becomes a guide. Uh, and this is important in a family of practitioners. From a guide, one can go and become a guardian, from a guardian to a teacher, to a master, to a guru. And this is what both the teacher and a father is. And one, once a guru, like, like um, I'll become a, a great master, uh, like Master Chanyan is to us, and uh, he will treat us like all her children. So this coverings of ignorance, the Buddha had been eliminating his afflictions and ignorance. As a result, he attained perfect enlightenment, and that's why he's called the Tathagata. The Tathagata means um, he journeys to the proper truth suchness and from his cause. So therefore, Tathagata uh, is able to transcend uh, across the shores. So if you want to attain Buddhahood, he must persevere for a long time. It's an undergo the cyclic positive causes and effect and kind of give help to help to others. So this in a process of a cultivation, not only are we uh, undergoing all these positive causes, that we also sow the seeds on others. That's the reason why I put up this line here from Kavyana Maitra, a spiritual friend, to be able to guide others in the process that we do. So this is the gradual process that we have to gain. You want to reach the level of um, uh, what Master is explaining about Buddhahood. So if we want to attain Buddhahood, it must be perceived for a long time. And it's not just about this one lifetime as I explained at the beginning. So we undergo this cycle of positive causes and effect, and on the process, remove all of our affliction. This is part of purification, at the same time, growing in uh, wisdom. So we all intrinsically have the Buddha nature with the underlying goodness in all of us. So in this teaching today, we got the underlying intrinsic nature. So we need to remove this affliction, which is covering us, which is the dark coverings which we have uh, right now. And so we do so um, without asking anything in return. And this is what the Bodhisattva path is. So after remaining all this, removing um, this ignorance and we remove all this uh, uh, darkness on all matters and principles that hinder us and then free us from delusion of all kinds of a contaminants which are covering us. So what are these lessons learned? 
So one who follow the principle of Agatha and returns to the three arms of some of others is called the Tathagata, which I mentioned. So he can travel short, short, short enlightenment, short some sort of enlightenment, and, and a Bodhisattva, even after attaining enlightenment, return to the samsara. So that's why when when the bodhisattvas who are around now, the enlightened beings, but they're here to help liberate us from samsara. So they return back uh, to um, the short, short samsara. So the which bodhisattva do, are not present just on earth. They are also present in other realms. For the for example, Siddhagaba bodhisattva, um, uh, he is in the hell realm. And then um, the Tassajya Bosat is in the heavenly realm. So the Kwan Bosat is in the, um, the, um, the worldly realm. So ignorance creates uh, many afflictions. So the, 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 for the moment, we are so covered with all these dark coverings, uh, our mind becomes uh, dark and dull because we can't see through. So imagine the same way, imagine you're driving a car, um, all covered, uh, you can't even see clearly from the front windscreen at the same way. So how are we going to drive? So we drove all over the place. So because of this, um, one who has this, you have limited capabilities and the mind cannot reflect the light of all dharma. So the, um, um, the minds are not in harmony of external conditions where the minds cannot reflect the light of all dharma um, and matters and principles. So if we are in that situation and you're not unable to understand and discern what the Dharma is, we'll be easily afflicted by any changing condition, uh, people, people, better in people, better in matters, uh, so on. And that's the reason why we get, uh, that gives rise to uh, afflictions because we are ignorant in what we do. We can be mindful examine the Buddha Dharma that we can cleanse our minds and ignorance will naturally be eliminated forever. And uh, this forever is means you're totally purifying you of all your karmic seeds. And uh, this is state of Buddhahood, of course. And in so doing, then you attain the virtue of ending. I mean, you're completed. You have done uh, all that you have purified yourself and uh, you become a, um, a Buddha. And that's what Master is trying to say here. So in the comes of contemplation uh, for today about this uh, dark coverings in, uh, in, in ourself is that just as much as you cultivate to awaken yourself, we strive to awaken others to the universal truth. And that's what Master has been trying to say amongst the masses. So the minds of the ordinary are stuck in the mud of samsara and we know that. And that's the reason why um, they sometimes um, we get ready to focus for them to, to understand things, to how things work. So even when the wisdom or the Dharma light is shining, they keep remaining in their shadow of darkness. I just want to emphasize the word, their shadow of darkness. Nobody's covering them up. It's only them who is covering up, okay? But if only they turn around, they will be facing the light. And this is what awakening to the Dharma is. On relationship, no amount of darkness can overcome light. And that is the faith that you must always hold true to yourself, even in difficult times. Dharma is the truth. Okay, Kanan brothers and sisters, that's all I have today. Thank you so much. Yeah, Kanan, Kanan Parachin, yeah, for your daily wonderful, wonderful uh, sharing always. Uh. Yes, okay, can we all on our video uh, take a good, quick good photo at the same time we allow Sister Siu Ching to say a few words before we join Brother Joe uh, at the 7 o'clock uh, Dharma Sutra uh, summary. Yeah, Sister Siu Ching, over to you. Morning. Morning, Gan Brother Robert, Gan Brothers and Sisters. Wonderful sharing. Yeah, it has to be a short one. Okay, because of Brother Joe's session, I think especially after last Friday, I truly anticipate and look forward to today. Uh, sharing how uh, okay. uh, very good to all the wonderful sharing i like what this uh somebody said when we understand the truth there is no fear indeed but uh, then as, uh, as we are on this uh, journey of uh path of truth suchness and we heard that from master said uh, from the cause come to the effect wow then the sister, Listening to that, uh, I suddenly remember of this uh, platform, Saturday Hualien, and even this one, you see the MCO, all these courses that 
planting, what is right to do. We just do it at the point of time, but thinking only for the MCO time. See today, because of that good courses that we have planted, today we see the, the result and the efforts. Uh, everything that we're doing, just took a, took a very important. So we have no fear because we understand the truth how garden with that uh back to you, Brother Robert, and uh, maybe a, which of us be able to walk very steadfast on this path, our one thought, one vow, lifetime after lifetime. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. So 